We traveled to Iberia. Uh, the case that I bring here today is located in northwest Iberia. It's within the Sabor Valley, which is a river tributary to the Douro River. It's the main river in Iberia Peninsula. And this region is a very specific in geological terms because uh, it, it has the neotectonic action uh, pretty in, intense. So um, all the rocks here, or the majority of rocks here, are either igneous or metamorphic. We are uh, seeing now some assemblage that goes from early Upper Paleolithic to Bronze Age from this valley here. And uh, because of the uh, lithological background, the collections here, the entire lithic collections, not only the napping, napping stones, um, are mostly from quartz. All, uh, there's a big range of quartz here used. And we have a little bit of flint and shard here, which is almost residual. And we are speaking now about these other lithologies, which are mainly local. Of course, all of those are mainly local, OK? But we are speaking up ah, here. <laughs> Just so, so that you can see, um, we started to compute, to build a little tech about uh, this valley, the valley uh, resources. And we've identified more than 30 types of rocks here. So there's a big variety of quartz, which is what they prefer for napping. Quartzite, shirts and flints, and um, a big variety of other silicious rocks with fine grain, such as jasp, uh, hydrothermal rocks, uh, lidite, also mentioned here today, um, uh, Calcedonia, and here we have the other lithologies where grey walk <coughs> is inserted. We have uh, granite, schist, uh, um, and other unmentional things here. So, about the grey walk, we had to divide it in some types here. The so one, the two, one grey walk with iron inclusions here. We can see the, the reddish area and other types of grey walk. They vary. Uh, with the, te the texture from very fine to a little bit more coarse and they vary also the silica content a little bit. The assemblages that we are speaking here today, okay, so they go to from the early Upper Paleolithic to the Bronze Age. This is the total lithic assemblage, not only the, the napstone but everything that's uh, found here in the place and this is the percentage of grey walk that within the chronology. Uh, we can see, more or less, a little, a little bit of an increase of grey walk use as we go to the Holocene periods. And in the Holocene periods, okay, we have a, a much more presence of grey walk. In total, of the assemblage study, there's more than 2,000 pieces here. In total of the assemblage, grey walk is only 3.3%. But it's used in um, a big variety of functions and uh, forms here. We can see also that uh, communities prefer all of them, mostly, grey walk over schist, which is represented here. And it's somewhat similar to grey walk. It's used in uh, much of the same functions here. And we, I also want to, to show um, all your attention to this grey walk with iron inclusions that we can find mostly in the Magdalenian and the Gravetian and it's um, ascribed to some specific function that we'll speak about uh, soon. So, it's a local rock, it's available, 
We can find it on the river also with some uh, rolling. <laughs> Okay, so we can find it on the structures in every uh, chronology. This is a pole pit from Mesolithic. This is a heart from Bronze Age. We can see the thermal alterated uh, grey walk rocks all over the places. And there we can see a Magdalenian level. And you can see that everything that is grey, it's almost for sure grey walk. There's some uh, schist here, but it's um, 90 percent of gray walk. Uh, these large pieces that you see here, the site is not well preserved, although it has a big assemblage of materials. Uh, all the pieces, the long slabs, slabs that you see here, uh, sh should have been used in some forms of structures or uh, arranging the space during the <coughs> sorry the Magdalenian times. And we can see uh, also this type of situation uh, in the Gravetian. The grey walk slabs are also used in other type of structures here in pits. We can identify the negative structures by the, the vertical position of the slabs, big slabs, and the grey walk is used um, for against the walls of the pits or to covering the content of the pit. Here we have a burial, a child, child burial. It's a situation that we see repeated in the Bronze Age in the valley sometimes, so the grey walk is also associated to the, those type of structures. Uh, as I said before, we have big slabs of grey walk, and here as you see a little bit more uh, rolled by the river, um, worked by the river. And they are uh, transported for the site because they they don't doesn't they don't exist in the platforms. Okay, they are transported this size for the site. Uh, some of them doesn't have any anthropic um, mark. Some of the blocks and the slabs present uh, percussion marks. Just these ones are <coughs> angles. As you can see, they are mostly used during the Pleistocene. This one is really easy to see. This one has percussion marks all over the place. So it could be an angle also, but could be a part of some, time, some kind of other structure or something like that. This is, uh, the anvils are very recurrent during the chronology of the Sabor Valley also. Um, it's a little bit strange, but it's also used for napping, okay? They try to obtain, uh, and they can, obtain flakes with this type of material, and they do, in some cases, obtain tools, mostly uh, retouched flakes, notches, and denticulates, um, but they use it also for the, the napping acti activities. They use this type of material also in the daily activities. You can see here, those are two examples from the Chalcolithic period. Now, we can see here some cut marks. Okay, they use it as a support for cutting something. And here, the uh, for um, a scrubber. Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> okay, is it? One other interesting uh, use, although we don't understand yet for what, is that they use these uh, elongated slabs to um, produce an edge here. You can see it during the Calcolithic and during sometimes in the Mesolithic, in some sites of the Mesolithic, and some of them present burnt marks. We couldn't understand yet what they were made for, but it, they are also recurrent during the, the chronology of the valley. At least, at last, um, some kinds, some types of grey walk are selected to uh, as art uh, supports. We also have uh, rock art in the valley, but those are mobile art. Um, they they were found more than. 100 and uh, how to say it? <laughs> 105,000 pieces. No, 
1,500 pieces, uh, and some of them uh, glued together. We hear one example and another example. These uh, supports only appear in the Magdalenian and in the Gravettian Solutrean and Magdalenian period, applied as art. Uh, the the rock art in the other periods is is on on the rock art. Okay, here. Just to conclude, um, we can see. I, I would like to stress the fact that. During the Pleistocene period, we have, in fact, a, um, a big use of grey rock in the napstone um, assemblages, and the anvils are very present during the Pleistocene also. Here in the Holocene, um, Mesolithic and Holocene, they are not so, so used, at least in grey rock. Uh, the other thing that is quite impressive is that they select the type one, the grey rock one, here. And here during the Capolithic, it's the um, where the where we see most of the the daily tasks applied in grey rock. Not na not uh, napping stones, not art, but the cutting, the you know, you understand. I don't know the word. It is also uh, very used for um, thermal um, structures to to concentrate the heat. Grey rock is a uh, it's very good to concentrate the heat. And here, I would like to stress one last thing: in mobile art, uh, we can see that it's where the grey rock with iron inclusions is present. It's, it's only present here once more. And here, but it's selected specifically for the support of uh, model art. Okay, this is a little bit fast, but <laughs> and thank you.